um, four way with the hip lying down. So obviously a lot easier option to start with than trying to do something in standing with a TheraBand. Um, depending on how hard you're wanting a patient to work, you can minimize gravity, you can try and maximize gravity, have them work directly against it um, by just changing the position, whether you're gonna have them be prone, supine, sideline, or, or whatever. So if we're doing gravity minimized, we're typically gonna want the weight of the legs supported. So they're just doing essentially their hip abdomen adduction in this position. If you want to get them um, with flexion extension, then you get them in sideline and come this way and this way. Have them hold on to the table if they need to, keep rotating. Definitely want to watch the pelvis and don't let it roll back and forth anytime you're in sideline um, with those. If you want to make the glutes and hamstrings work a little bit harder, put them in prone and just coming up into extension with that multi-hip motion. Um, then we got into hamstring curls. Um, we can do them in standing, just use the TheraBand or a, or a cuff weight. Um, keep in mind, as you start bending the knee, it's gonna tend to roll up. I should probably come a different angle. It, it tends to wanna roll up and down the patient's leg a little bit when you do it. So if you have some another strapping system like the sport cord that actually stays put a little better, it's probably a little bit better option for that. Um, certainly you can do hamstring curls in prone, just like this, cuff weight, manual resistance, or manually just hook the TheraBand somewhere else on the table, or just have the therapist hold it as the patient curls up um, with that. If you're trying to get a little bit more medial hamstring or lateral hamstring, you can angle the foot a little bit differently. Um, to try and target either the, the outside or the inside muscles with that motion. Um, what else? Stability ball. Um, hamstring curls are pretty tough. The peanut's going to make it a little bit easier because I don't have to stabilize in as many planes. Whoa. <laughs> but essentially you're having a bridge and then pull in and stretch back out. You can do bilateral or you can do unilateral. And it's definitely a lot easier on the peanut than a regular stability ball, for sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Time for some clamshells. <laughs> when you're doing clamshells, you can do it just with the weight of the leg, um, or you can loop a TheraBand around the person's knees is another common way to do it. Um, you want to make sure that they don't roll back at the pelvis, so try and keep the, the two halves of the pelvis stacked right on top of each other. And you're just basically trying to let the heat, the foot of the top leg um, and the hip serve as kind of your, your pivot points that you're allowing the rest of the leg to kind of rotate around. So we're really looking at that external rotation when we do that. Um, another great one for the abductors, external rotators, is going to be your fire hydrant. And it's basically just like the male dog will typically do, just trying to raise the leg out to the side. And you can do it with just gravity. Um, the weight of the leg, you can put a TheraBand around them and have them do it that way as well. Um, but you're essentially just lifting that leg up in the air and bringing it back down. Um, we did the four-way hip earlier. I'm not going to show it again. Um, but in this case, we can target the exercise in open chain on whichever leg has the strap attached to it and go through those same motions. So if we're looking at closed chain, it's going to be the stance leg. But if we're looking at open chain, you're going to be really trying to focus the motion on the leg that's moving through space with that one. Um, we've got our straight leg raise. Hopefully everybody's familiar with that. Um, typically going to be, usually in this kind of position, you can be all the way supine as well, but a lot of times people will use a wedge or just have the person kind of prop. I always cue my patients to really try and get a good strong quad set, isometric of the quad to get the knee as straight as they can, kind of keep the toes pointed up at the ceiling, and then just slowly raise the leg up and back down. You're not trying to go as high as you can. You're, you're typically just going maybe to about 45 degrees or so of hip flexion and then coming back down. And you can focus the effort more on the concentric by going faster on the way up. Um, I mean, going a little bit slower on the way up. Or if you want to focus on the eccentric, you can have them really try and prolong that lowering down phase to work a little bit harder. But super great exercise for a lot of different leg. Um, pathologies. Um, we've got our heel slides. Um, heel slide is for hip and knee range of motion. 
essentially just it's called a heel slide because your heel stays in contact with the, the support surface as you bend and straighten the knee up as much as you can. If somebody needs help, you're going to loop around a towel or sheet so that they can pull up if they're needing a little bit of assistance to get more range of motion with that. Um, we've got quadruped hip extension. Um, so quadruped is, is on all fours like I was for the fire hydrant exercise. Your hip extension, you can do it either with or without resistance. Typically you're going to extend the knee and then just try and come up and back down. Try and avoid this kind of thing. Just smoothly go up as far as they can without really having to go into more lumbar lordosis and then coming back down. Um, sometimes people will let the knee flex and then extend back out. That's really more of your donkey kick. Um, but if you're really just trying to get the hip extension, you could just do it just like that. Um, prone, we've got hip extension. We kind of showed that um, with the four-way hip laying down already. Um, I think you get the idea with seated hip, external rotation, internal rotation, just like your MMTs, essentially. You can do those at different positions to try and strengthen people um, at different angles with that one. Um, your quad set, kind of talked about that as the lead-in to the straight leg raise. Um, sometimes it's helpful to put like a little rolled up towel or something soft underneath the person's knee so they kind of know what to push against. And I'll just cue them to try and push the back of the knee down into that um, small towel roll. You want something that's very easily compressible if you're going to do that because you don't want it to limit their ability to fully extend the knee as they're doing that motion. Um, knee extension, multi-angle isometrics. I would probably do it in this position with the person sitting, therapist on a chair or stool in front of them, have them resist as they try and push, and then bring it out about 15, 20 degrees, change in angle, and then have them push against that, come up a little bit more, push against that. Again, if you remember the multi-angle isometric research, you should get strengthening at about 10 degrees on either side of whatever position you try and strengthen the muscle. So if I'm at 45 degrees, I would in theory get some strengthening from 35 to 55 degrees of flexion by doing it in that one position. So we wanna do multiple positions with that so we kind of get strength throughout the whole arc of the motion of that joint. Um, hamstring set, um, not as commonly done as a quad set. Um, you can do it a couple different ways and cue the patient a couple different ways. I usually let my patient bend the knee just a little bit. I find that it made it easier for them. And I wanted to think about kind of digging that heel straight down into the table to try and isometrically engage those hamstrings. Again, you could do this multi-angle, come up a little bit more and dig in. Um, another way that I would do it a lot of times with patients is I would essentially stand at the foot of their bed, grab their foot, and have them think about doing like a heel slide. So they're trying to pull up this way to engage the hamstrings, and I'm not letting them. So I'm going to give them that resistance. And for some patients, that helped them engage that muscle better. Had a lot of patients that had a hard time figuring it out, just pushing down with the heel when they did that one. So that's an option that I would do. Um, let's see, glute set, basically just lying supine typically. You could do it prone, most people are gonna do it supine, and you're just trying to squeeze your cheeks. Um, a common cue that I would tell people is just imagine you have like a dollar bill between your cheeks, and you don't want anybody to take it. So you're trying to squeeze those cheeks tight so they can't pull that piece of paper out of there. It's kind of like that finger abduction test, only different. <laughs> with your butt. Yeah. Um, long arc and short arc quads with or without resistance. So the long arc quad is this position here and just trying to extend the knee out. Cuff weight, thayer band if you want to make it harder. Short arc quad, you're typically going to use a bolster or something rolled up under the knee, and we're kind of after that terminal knee extension. So you want something about yay big, so we've got about 30, 40 degrees of bend in the knee, um, and then they're basically supported with the femur, and they're trying to extend the knee out and come back down like that. So um, easier than the long arc quad, and it's a little bit safer early on postoperatively for a lot of those patients. Um, next page, sorry. Um, isometric ankle fourways and Fairband ankle fourways. Um, Fairband, probably easier to talk about. You're just looping the band around the person's foot, either having them pull up into dorsiflexion 
or push down into plantar flexion, they can do it themselves that way. If you're trying to work the everters and inverters slash abductors and adductors of the foot, you're just going to loop the band around this way or this way and hold it so they have something to work against. If you're going to do isometrics at the ankle, you're just holding the foot in place and having the patient push against you most commonly. You could have them push against an inanimate object too if, if it was easier and you wanted that as part of their home program, um, then that might work. Um, inversion and eversion with a weighted towel. Um, you're basically putting a towel down on the ground. I don't have one handy. Um, and you're basically using the foot to try and slide the towel over um, and scoot it. You can put a weight on top of it um, so that way they're dragging it um, to give them a little bit more resistance as they're doing that motion. And you can certainly put it this way and, and pull out if you wanted to work more on the fibularis muscles or put it put the towel and the weight on this side and have them pull in if you're working more um, of some of the inverter um, and adductor type muscles in the foot. Um, range of motion, kind of ankle alphabet. Um, you can have people either imagine they've got a pen in between their toes and that they're writing the letters of the alphabet. You can do numbers, you can have them spell words, you can just do whatever. You're just trying to make them work through a whole bunch of different arcs of motion, different ranges to try and get that ankle moving a little bit more freely um, with that. Our towel crunch exercise, um, you're basically trying to strengthen the muscles in the arch. So you're going into toe flexion with your foot on the towel and trying to scrunch that towel up, essentially drag the towel towards you by using the muscles in your toe flexors to pull towards you. And again, if somebody's really strong, you can put a weight on it. When you're doing those towel type exercises, you have to think about the surface that the towel is on. Um, this floor in the lab here is rubber, so it's a little bit more grippy. If you're on a tile floor, it's going to be a little bit more similar to kind of being on a plinth where it's going to slide a little bit easier and not have as much friction um, to overcome with that. And then the marble pickup, um, you're essentially trying to work again on the toe flexors. You're trying to work on dexterity a little bit and you're essentially having the person pick up objects. It can be marbles. It, you can use bigger things too if somebody doesn't have the, the ability to grab something as small as a marble, but they're essentially trying to pick it up, lift it, and usually you'll have them like move it from one pile to the next or from one container to the next as they're doing that one, and then sterilize them. <laughs> yes. Okay.